So we've got our project called Array of Buttons. The first thing I'm going to show you, though, is just a single example of how do I actually make a button in code. So we're not actually going to use this toolbox at all today. We're going to be making everything in our code. So double click on your form and kind of see how to make a button programmatically. So the first thing you have to do is declare your your uh, your button. How do I? What word do I use when I want to declare something? Dim. Give it a name. You can call it button. It doesn't matter. I'm actually encourage you to call it button right now because we're going to be copying and pasting this and using it uh, elsewhere. If you don't, you're just going to have to do more changes than what you might otherwise. All right. So. I'm going to dim it as a button. Button is a type of thing. It's built into Visual Basic. Every visual programming language has built-in tools like buttons and labels and text boxes and all that stuff. Now the next step is to initialize our button. Just like when you declare an integer and initialize it or declare a string and then initialize it, these you can do these in two separate steps. When you initialize something like a button or a label or whatever, the line of code that you have to write is this. Button equals, and you have to use the word new. And then you just type in button. So this is like saying I have a string and I say s equals hello. Or I have an integer and I say x equals zero. This is initializing, as in giving it a value. All right, so there we made our button. What sorts of things do you think? Setting the size is easy. There are two properties that you can use. They are called height and width. As far as positioning goes, there are also two properties for positioning. They are called left and top. To actually get your button on the screen, and again, you won't want to actually use me.width and me.height. You need to adjust those. But to actually have your button show up, you have to do this me dot controls dot add and the thing you want to put on there this is the thing that actually says I want this object to be on this form me just references the form itself okay so you can test this out just set these equal to zero just set top and left equal to zero and you can test it out and you have a button bloop 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 there it is so, and again, I want you to try to adjust these so that it's at the bottom middle of the screen. To put it in the middle of the screen, we would need to know the width of the form and divide that by 2 and then subtract the width of the button divided by 2. Okay? You have to do half the button width because we're setting the left property and you have to go halfway to the left of the middle. For the top, you have to go me.height divided by 2. No, just me.height because I want it at the bottom. But then you got to subtract button.height to move it up to actually be on the form. Otherwise, it would be below the form. And you need to move it up just a, a, a shade more than that, actually, because of the borders of the form. So if you do me.height times 3 halves, that works pretty well. And there's your button right in the middle of your form. Now, as I was just talking with Josh about this, um, it doesn't 
it doesn't change it while the form's running because this code is just in form load. So it places it based on the size of your form when the program starts. So if you go change the size of your form in between the times that you run it, it will, it will adjust. If you want it to adjust dynamically while you're running the program, it's pretty easy to do. Check this out. So instead of load, there is a resize. And all you got to do is take these two commands, the left and the top, copy them, paste them. Yeah, but you got to dim, you got to, what you have to do is you have to dim your button globally. And you actually have to make it a new button immediately. You can't do it in two, two separate steps like what we did. So if you want to try this, which I think you should, it's kind of cool. Um, you'll want to, you want to comment out the making the button here and instead make it here all at once. And if you already copy and pasted these two lines down below, you're going to have to change all these B's to lowercase because it didn't recognize the lowercase button at the time. So now our button gets made immediately and then resize gets called automatically all the time. And it's always at the bottom. which is kind of fun. Okay, so now that we've done this with one button, it's going to be pretty easy to adapt this to do it with a lot of buttons. So up here in globally, let's make an array of buttons. So just like any other array, we're going to go dim, give it a name, since it's an array, you have to give it a size. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do five buttons. So what do I need to put here? Stupid visual basic. Four. Okay. So now down in my form load down below. I'm going to initialize these all in one shot because all we have to do is just this code but five times. It's really easy to do. 4 i equals 0, 2. Now you could put 4 here, but I'm going to go buttons.length minus 1 in case I want more buttons later. All right, so take these five lines of code here, copy them, paste them inside your for loop. And I want us to think about, I want you to think about what, we're, what changes we're going to have to make here to get this to work. All right, so we changed this all to buttons I. Our top property is not going to be different. Our left property will definitely be different. So our slope is 120, which we're going to have to multiply by what? I is correct. Each iteration is going to get farther and farther from the left. Our initial value will be 20. So when I is 0, the left property will be 20. When I is 1, the left property will be 140, and so on and so on. It keeps increasing by 120 each time. All right? Uh, now, the one thing we're missing here, and if you don't if you don't get this in, it's not going to work at all. Buttons I equals new button. You do have to initialize every single button. Have to initialize every single button.
Okay, is this going to work? Well, <laughs> there it is. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now, here's our end goal. This is, this is what I want to happen. I want... I want a, a, a set of labels beneath each button. And what those labels are going to do is they're going to keep track of how many times we've clicked each button. Okay? So we're not, not only are we going to need labels to display each count, but we're also going to need an array of integers to keep track of those counts. And this is this is it. This is what, the, what I want the project to be. Four labels keeping track of how many times we've clicked each button. You do not need to initialize integers. They're automatically zero. What I want you to do right now is I want you to set up your labels. In your loop, you will need to do exactly what you did for the buttons with your labels. Except your labels need to be below your buttons or above them. I don't care which, but you need to be able to see them, not on top of your buttons, below or above them. Okay, go. So I saw a lot of you making a separate for loop. Listen. I saw a lot of you making a separate for loop for this. You can put this all in the same for loop. It doesn't matter. But uh, so we need labels I. I'm going to copy and paste this a whole bunch of times. So first of all, it needs to be a new label. Second of all, we need to set the height. You, I, it doesn't. This isn't going to matter. The height and the width don't matter because they're auto sized. So whatever. And then we need to set the left property. Since the height and the width are the same as our buttons, you can do the same math. Now, if you want them to be centered, um, you might want to start it at 70 because that's adding half the width of the button. Our buttons are 100. So if you move them over an additional 50, that'll center them under the buttons. Yeah, I, I think I'll put the labels over to the very left of the button, though. Because I think the text gets, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you might be right. Top. Now, setting the top value. Oh, I guess I have mine at the bottom, don't I? Um, setting the top value, you can do me.height divided by 2, but you can add um, like half of the button height or something like that. Basically, you just need it to be lower or higher than your buttons. And then you got to make sure that you're doing your me.controls.add labels i. So I'm going to see if that works before I spend a lot of time. Goodness sakes, why am I... Oh, so what did I forget? What property did I forget of my labels? I label that text. So I'm going to want them to start them all at zero. There we go. All right, so I will put that back up there in case you need it. So to handle all the buttons when they're clicked, we need to write uh, an event handler. Our event handlers procedures or functions? Procedures. So we're going to go sub. You can call it whatever you want. But what you do not have a choice over is the number of parameters and type of parameters. Remember when you're making an event handler you have to use these two things. So just go up to your foreign load or some other event, copy those two parameters, 